Hello, this is Bonnie, and today we're going to try a different card than what I've made before. And I'm actually not going to be do doing a Christmas card, but I'm going to be using With Love from this um, sentiment set from um, Fairy Hugs. It's called Love at Christmas. And I bought actually two of these, and one I've kept as a um, whole, and then the other ones I had cut apart to use, and as I can make my own sentiments that way. Okay, um, the other thing I'm going to be um, using is Callie's Poppy. And so far, I just plan to use this part of the stamp, and I'm going to be using a Pollen Wing. Um, and then I'm also going to be using some dies, um, two square dies from my stash. And just to let you know what the size is of those, um, this one is one and three quarters, and this one is one and a half. So you can do any size, but those are the two sizes I've decided because of the size of the stamp. So um, the other thing that you need is this is a, a paper for pop, from Pollen Wing. Um, you also need two more um, um, papers um, cut just a little bit smaller than your top paper. This top paper for this um, card um, is five and a half and then I just cut this a little bit smaller because it's going to be going behind it just like that. So I'm going to go ahead and get my stamp platform and we'll get started. All right so what I want to tell you from this for this technique I'm sure there's a different way you can do it but this is what I want to be doing. I cannot drop down my paper and make it so that it goes into the corner the way I want to. So I am setting it up on my grid, but my suggestion, if you can drop down your paper the way that you um, can put it in the corner so that it's gonna be a perfect cut every time. So um, like I said, my alternative is I am doing um, the grid on here to make sure this paper is in the exact space I want it to be because the paper's behind, or the one paper behind, I'm gonna to have to stamp in the exact same position. So that's really important for this technique. Um, so like I said, I am gonna be stamping um, Callie's Poppy and I want to make sure that I have room for the With Love underneath there. So that's what I want to do for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that set up on here. I am going to be using um, VersaFine Clear morning mist. I think that's up. It needs to go up. Okay. And um, the reason I'm doing that is I'm going to be coloring mine in. If you do not want to color yours in, you can do two things. You can just color or stamp it in regular, um, the color you want to, black, whatever. Or you could actually um, fussy stamp this and um, have it be a color that way. Or if you watch um, one of my previous videos where I actually inked up using Distress Oxide and then sprayed it with water, you could even go that route. So there's many different ways you can do this type of technique and get the same look. It'll be a little bit of a different look, but a similar look. So um, the reason I chose this stamp is because I am going to be making a cut out window and I wanted to find one that I thought a floral that would work that I could use a cutout window. So um, this one's gonna work for that and I'll show you that in just a bit, the reason for that. So I need to get that little bit right there better. Let's see if I can do that without having to stamp it a second time because I'm gonna be coloring mine in. There, that's exactly what I want. Now the next thing I need to do, which is really this is simple in itself, um, you could actually just leave it this way I'm going to stamp in the With Love. And like I said, you can see that I actually cut that away from the rest of the um, sentiment. Um, here it is. I wanted to show you. I just cut that away. You have to be um, careful around the C and the H, but there's plenty of room for the rest of it. So I have With Love, and I also have the At separate, and then I have Christmas separate. So that works really well. Um, to have another part of a sentiment. Now for this, because I know um, I'm not going to be coloring that in, I'm just going to go ahead and use the VersaFine Clear Nocturne, and that will work great. Oh, already I made a mistake. I was not supposed to remove that stamp. That's all right, we're going to line it up. 
So very, very important, do not take off the stamp. Okay, so that's the way that's gonna be. So I'm gonna line this back up, like I said. And it doesn't have to be exactly perfect and you'll see why I say that. But it should be, it could have been if I would not have moved it, taken it off. So I'm lining that up and I can see it so that it's, and the one I wanna make sure is exactly as best as I can is this one right here, because that's where my window is going to be. So I'm putting that right back on and we'll be fine. All right, so this one comes off, like I said, and I did cut that other one just a tad bit smaller. I have to also keep that in mind. Or what you can do really is um, keep it the same size and then cut it smaller. So this is gonna go on here and I can see how much smaller it is because those are my grid lines I matched up already. And all I'm gonna do is stamp this again. I'm gonna stamp it with the um, morning mist. And I'm leaving the, the um, second plain white one without any stamped image on it. It's just gonna act as a mat. And the only part of this that's gonna really show is what's gonna be in the window. So I don't even have to be concerned about this part up here. It's just this part right here I'm really concerned about where my window is gonna be. Okay, let's check that out. All right, that's gonna be perfect. So that's all you need to do to prepare your paper um, in, in your stamping. The next part is um, actually going to be die cutting your um, window. So this is how we're gonna do that. I'm gonna pull this back up on top and all I'm gonna do, this doesn't even matter underneath right now, um, but what I'm gonna do is I, the larger of the two dies is I'm gonna line that up on the, what I want my window to be. And I want my window to be like that. So I'm gonna be using um, a little piece of tape and I'm gonna just put that on there just that way and I'm gonna run that through my die cutting machine and I'll be right back. All right, so I've um, cut this out and actually I would save that and use that on another card and I'm gonna color this in as well. Now you can see looking right through that I have a window there and you can see exactly um, how it can line up underneath. And I can even move this slightly if I want to because again, I'm making this paper underneath smaller so I can have that wiggle room underneath. But I wanna mat this. So this is the next thing that I need to do is I need to put this paper that I'm gonna be putting in between these two, a sandwich, right? Um, and I'm lining that up. Again, I can cut this smaller underneath. So I can always make that work. I'm taking the smaller of the two dies and I'm gonna put that right in there and that's gonna be my mat. And I'm just eyeing that. You can do it whatever way you like. Um, that's all I'm doing. I'm getting a piece of tape. I have to do that like that keep my fingers in there a second so it doesn't move and I'm going to bring that to the die cutting machine. Okay so now I've got that um, square cut out. Put that to the side and this is my mat. This is my top and my cover and then it will be lining up on top of this just like that and what I will do is um, and make sure everything underneath will be good. I am going to raise this all up with um, double-sided foam tape, and that will give me even more of a dimension for my card. But again, that doesn't have to be done if you're if you're wanting to mail that off into your you know envelope and you don't want the bulk. But that is what I'm going to be doing with that. So my next step 
will be to color that in with my Prismacolor pencils. I did want to show you this. Um, if you want, you can even add your fairy to that. You could even add um, your poppy underneath there. There's a lot more options. I mean, I think that looks really pretty there and with the with the um, fairy also. So, but that's just if you want it as simple as that, that looks really nice. It could even be cut and be made into a bookmark. So that's just to give you some ideas and inspiration as to what you can do um, in addition to this. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that colored and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so now that I have it all colored, I'm gonna show you that. Um, you do have to color, you do not have to color this entire thing. You only need to color what's going to be showing up in the window. And you can, you know, color beyond that a little bit. And so that's how that's going to look. The next thing, like I said, um, I was going to do, like I said, I colored these with the Prisma Color Pencils. And um, there is a little bit of a difference when you color on white as opposed to coloring on something that has a color. So then the second part that goes in between here is kind of like our matte. So what I did was, um, first of all, I put some double-sided tape around this frame. And I also put it on this side because this is smaller. I cut it a little bit smaller and I wanted to make sure that I, I had the tape um, so that it would adhere to this. Um, it should work. If I put it on here, I was afraid I was gonna miss this part. So I'm gonna do it, um, I'm gonna layer it going backwards, I guess is the best way to say it. So I'll just show you, it's easier for me to show. So, I'm gonna, I didn't put it around here because I wasn't sure this is the part that's going to be shown. And I wasn't exactly sure the best place to put it, so I put it on this part. Because it's bigger, and that's the smaller square. So now all i got to do is just line up that mat the way that I want it to be. And then we're all set with that piece. So then the next part is to put the very first part on. And I didn't want to get want to put the tape on here because it's a little bit smaller, I think. So I totally put it on the back side. This could be some that overlap anyway, and that's okay. All right, just got these couple more pieces to take off. And this makes it a little bit more stable around the window too by adding this um, double-sided tape. And you have to, once you do it here, you have to do it to make it even throughout the entire card. And I didn't put any right here because it was so close. So now it's a matter of just basically lining this up so that it matches pretty much with what we have up above. I think that looks good. Okay, so then that's going to be what your card ends up looking like. I also went ahead and made a card base, so I can go ahead and just stick that straight on there just like that. So that's how you can do the card. And again, like I said, you wanna add a little bit more to this. Um, I would add this, you know, you could add this to it and you could add the fairy up here, whatever you wanted to do. But, um, it's really kind of a fun card if you think of your stamps in terms of how you can put them through, you know, make a window. So um, pretty simple, um, I think, to put it together. So anyway, I appreciate you stopping by and um, I'll have all the um, information in the description below.